today we're going out for a shoot. I mean, not out of the ordinary, I guess. Not for you. Not for me. Particularly going out though today because you are recording episode... Probably three or four, three and a half. Okay. Yep. Of your new YouTube channel. Yes, correct. Right at the moment, as you guys are watching this, still debating what the name's going to be. I think that'll be decided over a couple of beers later on this afternoon. We have our best ideas when we're <laughs> drinking. Yeah, well, we certainly have ideas. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's not commit to uh, <laughs> too much. Uh, tell us what, what, what you're starting. I wanted to do a, um, a series of videos that focused on the process of learning how to shoot extreme long range. And um, have you done much of your last stuff? Or, uh, I've shot PRS and I've shot out to a mile, but sort of then I thought, well, you know, it'd be kind of cool to shoot further than that. Yeah. And that's the whole point of long range shooting is sure. testing how far you can shoot. Where I live, I've got so much space, why not Why not go down the ELR part? A lot of videos on YouTube that I sort of went looking for, and there's a lot of people who show they're shooting long range, sure. or extreme long range, but there's no sort of, this is a path that you potentially follow or not follow to, to get there. That's kind of the reason I decided to sort of put the series of videos together. Someone else in my position could, could benefit from that. I'm sure there's videos that explain particular techniques or particular this or that, but I guess what you're doing is documenting a story of it. It's a journey of, you know, frustration, frustration. No <laughs> and some success. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot easier than, than, than what it's been. It's not that it's not enjoyable, mm. it's more than just a three three part series like it's quite involved as it turns out so we spoke about it and with you kicking off the channel it turns out that i'm going to be passing through i don't know four or five times this year yep i'm going to drop in on ben every couple of months yep. and basically check out where he's up to yeah see how much of my hair's falling out <laughs> with this project <laughs> underselling it a little <laughs> it's going to be good guys i promise i promise you i promise you it will but what are we doing today we're going to be doing a bit of load testing. I've narrowed down a, an area of powder charges that I think are, are going to be accurate. That's that's my main that's my main focus is to try and sort of see if these loads actually shoot. The, the rifle itself was cheap by comparison to a factory rifle. The JTAC was cheaper to build than my 6.5 Creedmoor. <laughs> I can promise you one thing it won't be cheaper to run. I'm finding that <laughs> it is probably three times as much fun to shoot so. Nice, nice yeah, mate yeah. Well, we'll get ourselves out to the range and let's go and Let's yeah, go shoot. Absolutely. something and then you sort of go all oh, right I'll improve on that or I'll just make sure it's been consistent and that sort of stuff and then you find it's not <laughs> how did I shoot that that small group at such a long range yesterday but then maybe I had too many beers when I was <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I'm 
having trouble getting on target at 500, which I wasn't the other day. I managed to shoot a pretty good group at over a thousand meters, and today I'm having trouble hitting a target at 500, about sort of yay by yay. What I've resolved to do is take some cardboard and set it up at 100 meters and just shoot a few groups and see if I can see if the load itself is particularly inconsistent and not very accurate and see if that's the problem. If it's not, then it's just me, which is quite possible. So it's, it's frustrating then when it doesn't quite go to plan, isn't it? Yeah, and my naivety about how quick I thought this whole process was gonna be. Yeah. Thinking that being a big caliber, you know, you do your load development in like whole grains or half grains and that sort of stuff. And I thought it'd be, you know, a pretty easy sort of thing to find the right the right node and that sort of stuff. And yeah, it's actually a lot more frustrating than than I thought it would be. Part of the journey. Part of the journey. <laughs> it's all part of the rich tapestry. Totally. I mean, yeah. it keeps you awake at night. <laughs> First world problems, yeah? Yeah, totally, totally. And then you go back down there and you shoot this and they'll go terribly. And then eventually you'll get home and then realize your Picatinny rail is loose or something like that, something like that, something like that, something like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Of course, it's the best kind of day for mucking around with a big chunk of cardboard when it's windy. This is quite a uh, contraption I, you've got, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I just realised I'm complaining a lot. Everyone, everyone wants to see me complain. So, if I'm aiming about there, I should have something up here somewhere, I reckon. Challenges you face with uh, <laughs> new projects, new ideas, and they're all yeah. meant to go perfectly. And uh, it doesn't just happen in shooting, but no, no. it happens a lot in shooting. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's life. Yeah. It's part of it. And then capture it all on film. So people yeah. can learn from it. Laugh at it. Learn from it. Learn from yeah, it. Yeah, that too. Yeah. You're a beacon, but not to follow. Yeah. A beacon that says, don't, do, don't, don't ever do here. this. Yeah, don't come yeah, near Yeah, we had this great idea and yeah. don't, don't do it. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about things being loose, like Picatinny rails. Picatinny rails loose or something like that. It should also be worth mentioning muzzle brakes are included in that, that check of things that are loose. Because mine was loose. Can't see where they went, but I guess we'll go down and have a look and, and find out. That's encouraging. Right. So what's happened, mate? Well, what's happened is, um, yeah, I, my muzzle brake was loose, and when I tightened it, the groups got tighter as well. So, <laughs> turns out there's actually not a lot wrong with the load. It's just, I should have checked the gun. So based on what you just said, Ben, you said that you tightened up your muzzle brake yep. and your grips got tighter. Yep. So how tight can you get your muzzle brake? I don't know, but I've got a spanner in the back of the year. <laughs> so we'll get it. <laughs> Tightest grips ever. There's a method we used to teach when we are teaching when we are shooting that would have solved this. your problem prior to you having to change targets. And, and it was the, the front to back check. And so basically if you're having a problem with your gun and... That's a, that's a different front to back check, that one. Uh, if you're having problems with your gun and you're sort of trying to work out what they were, well you'd, you would look at your gun and work front to back. So you would check your muzzle brake first. And, and obviously in this situation, that probably would have solved the problem yeah, well, immediately. Shooting rounds, yeah. But then you would move back to, you know, obviously your, your barrel, but your bipod and your connection to your bipod from there. And then you, you pretty much move, but from the front of the gun through to the back of the gun and check all the bolts, every, every connection point, every component, Scope rings, all that sort of gear. Because you did it in order, you know, you, you didn't sort of check your scope and then check your bipod and check something else, you won't miss anything. You go all the way from the front to the back of the gun, making sure it's all doing exactly what it's meant to. Funnily enough, um, <laughs> that, that would have that would have helped. Anyway, problem resolved, hopefully. So let's get back out at 500 and give it a crack. So I tightened that up and funnily enough, my group's got a lot tighter as well. Yeah, thankfully, uh, Rusty's capturing all this for his video later on so we can share in this slightly embarrassing uh, <laughs> on as many as many different channels as we can because <laughs> people can learn from this everyone's a winner today except you yeah ex except except me